Today I'm going to show a trick that I recently learned. And this is how to extend the capability of, of a small instrument such as a 48 bass accordion. And if you play one of these, one of the first limitations that you're likely to run into is on the bass side. But if you're playing in, in G or D, you'll quite often need a B minor chord. And the B minor chord is up here. So uh, that's a bit of a problem. <clears throat> and so this is quite often what pushes people to upgrade to a 72 or 96 bass accordion. And fair enough, that's fine. But there's also tricks you can use to fake these missing chords on the small accordions. Now, the, the first question would be, why do you want to do that? Why not just, why not just play a bigger accordion? Fine, you know, you can do that. But sometimes you might have a little accordion, you might, you might like playing it. For instance, this one I, I really love because it belonged to somebody who was, who was very special to me. And so I like to play it, and I like the way it plays, and I like the sound it plays. And the second reason why you might want to do this is it's a learning experience by learning to play the bass and the chords in different ways. You really find your way around. You find your way around this keyboard. You get to know where all the kind of basses are. You get to know where the notes are, the chords, and you get to know a little bit about, more about music theory. And the third reason is that you can play richer harmonies sometimes. You can play jazz chords, richer chords. So you get uh, gradually a more command of your instrument by playing around in, in these different ways. So, for instance, um, a situation where you might need uh, you might need a B minor chord is uh, is a tune like the Mucking of Geordie's Fire, and the second part is this. There we need the B minor, and it's not there. Now this is a 72 bass accordion, so this one does have the B minor. So now I can I can show you how the tune should sound, and it would be like this. So you can hear that B minor there. the sound we're looking for. If I play B minor, one of the ways that we can fake a B minor, if we if we look at the G row, we actually have a B note here, which is the counter bass of the G. And that's the same as the B that's up, up there. So one of the ways we can fake a, a chord is by simply hitting the counter bass and not bothering with the chord at all. And if you're going pretty fast with a tune, that can work all right. So like this. It can even add a bit of contrast. For instance, if you're playing something like a waltz, it may not work so well. Um, this is a, this this is a second part to the Mariner waltz, which is one of the Dubliners' tunes, and this also needs a B minor. Here, there, so this is G, B minor. And if we try to fake that B minor with just the root note, it, uh, it won't sound so good because the tune's too slow. A bit empty. So, let's look at a bit more of the music theory. What can we do? If we take a B minor chord, a chord is a B, 
D, F sharp. And if you hear it on the bass side, that's exactly the... Now if we go a bit down here, and we take a D major chord, a D major chord is D, F sharp, and F. So if we look at it, if we play, for instance, a B root note with a D major chord, then what we get is a, is, a, is a B minor, but with an A added in, which is a, which is a minor seventh. And that's pretty close to a minor chord. And in fact, it gets a jazz chord. It can even sound a little bit richer in some cases. So what we can do is, if we hit the, the G Kanga bass with the, B, with the D major chord, then we get a B minor seventh, which is pretty close. So this is the real B minor. And then this is my fake B minor. Real one. And the fake one. It's ever so slightly different. But when you're going fast with a tune, you really won't notice it. So if we, uh, if we go back to the jig, then uh, we can play it like this. <laughs> And then our B minor, G counter bass, with the D major. And then this would be the real B minor. And with the fake B minor. It's almost impossible to hear the difference, especially if you're going fast. And then with this, with this softer sort of approach with a chord, this will also work better with a with a waltz. So, for instance, if we play the this second part of the Marino waltz now, so this would be the real B minor. And with the fake B minor. You can hear it just sounds slightly different because when you, when you play the, the D major chord on its own, you haven't got the B to back it up. So with this, uh, I tend to play the, the chord quite, I tend to emphasize the bass note a little bit and, and soften the chord so that we get more of the B and less of the D as it were. But overall, it, it, it comes out pretty good. To the 48 bass. Okay, now I'm back with the 48 bass. Uh, so we're going to see how these tunes fit on the 48 bass, where we don't have the option of a real B minor chord. And if I start with the uh, with the jig, here comes the B, maybe minor. speed you don't even hear it happen and then with the vaults there's the B minor and it would be up there Right there. 
And especially it works really nicely here because we've got the in the right hand. So that adds that adds that quality. It takes away the D major sound. see once you once you get used to it what I tend to do is I, I tend to hit the, the, the kind of bass on the fourth finger and, and catch the chord the D major chord on the second chord. and that's got the advantage that if you want to play an alternating bass that sharp it lies right under your third finger so that would be F sharp is the third or the fifth note of the B minor chord, so we can play there an alternating bass of D major, F sharp, and that if you play it fast enough and you emphasize a little bit the B, then that comes out to be almost an alternating bass with a B minor. various tricks you can do with it. But, uh, what I find is sometimes I, I even use this on the bigger accordions just because sometimes it can be easier to grab that that fake B minor than to go all the way down here and find the real one. interesting and useful. Any comments or questions? Uh, write down in the comments section below and I'll uh, be very interested to see what you, what you make of that. And happy playing.